Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Low Float Strategies Play with the High Flying Bull. As always, just as a disclaimer before we dive in, I'd just like to mention, as always, the information we provide is not financial advice. You are 100% responsible for the investment decisions you make. And lastly, the information we provide is solely for education purposes and nothing more. All right, so the company we're covering today is AAOI. Applied Opto Electronics Incorporated, and you know it's it's in in these markets it's hard to find a, t- a setup that's just so textbook. It's so clean, and um, you know when we find setups that resemble such clean textbook patterns, you want to be on it, and you want to be on it without any reservation or hesitation. So let's walk through it. Let's walk through how this play sort of facilitated how we saw the opportunity and how we acted on the opportunity okay so first of all before we trade any stock we always have to ask ourselves what is the four criteria uh that or sorry does our four criteria or is our the four criteria that we have are they satisfied now i it does seem a little bit repetitive that i do this every single session but of course, it's so important and so necessary to one's trading success that we have to go through it every time because it determines whether it's a trade we can pursue. Remember, this is a game of identifying our edge and our criteria helps us to identify that edge. And when we say, when we identify an edge, we're simply defining that as setups that provide a higher probability of working in our favor. Okay, so the four criteria, so we're first of all looking at the breakout pattern. So we see that flat top. Flat top, we'll see similar resistance levels met by higher lows. Again, a bullish breakout pattern there. So that's that's good. We have our low float pad or low float stock, so it's under 100 oh, million. Oh. We can confirm that right here. 26 million. And then we have over three times relative volume. In fact, almost 300 times relative volume. So there are eyes on the stock. It did pop up number one on our scanners for most of the day. It was there and it was, you know, eyes were there. And of course it makes sense. It's such a textbook setup. And then lastly, we're looking at a valid news catalyst and we have one right there, basically announcing a new product line with quantum bandwidth products. Of course, that's that's always a bullish sign for the company and it's obviously very exciting news when you see a new product line being launched so that's sort of what brought volume in and that's what's kind of creating all that uh, relative volume okay so now we're you know four out of four great we're now ready to trade the stock where are we going to add so again as always i've highlighted here we're going to be adding on support and one thing I like to do when adding on support is to wait for a candle, especially in these markets, wait for a candle to sort of close above that support area. And why I do that is I want to confirm that support is held. If I simply just enter on the right when it's on the line, I have no sort of confirmation of whether that support is going to hold. Sure, I can look at volume. But in these markets, I want an extra little level of confirmation because in these markets, it's so choppy. You really want to be very selective with the patterns you choose to trade and how, how you identify your opportunities. So if you did actually enter here, I didn't personally enter here, but if you did enter here, you would see it move up and then it get quickly rejected. So it looked like we were going to break out and then it get flushed down by that red candle. So guess what? Because you bought on support, it's a riskless trade for you. It probably came out with a little bit of a chunk of change. That's great because guess what? You've, you're have you in a trade. It was invalidated, but because you bought on support, you ultimately did not lose any money. And that is a great, great thing for traders. Okay, so we'll wait now for the next support. And this is particularly where I added. I added as we see that green candle break above 
support. So we'll see volume receipt, great sign, suggests the trend is still intact. We'll buy on the this candle that breaks out, particularly with its body closing above support levels. So my entry is at about 345. I'll scale a little bit at resistance. So on that candle, I'll scale out just a tiny portion, 10 to 20%, particularly for the purposes of being defensive. We want to be defensive and reduce our risk along the way. And then you see throughout the day, you know, a slow but steady grind. And when you have a profit target here at 381, so for me, it was 381. And as you see this kind of just slowly grinding up a couple hours to get to your profit target, you can get impatient. It's it's totally possible. And sometimes a function of our impatience, or sorry, a, a product of our impatience is to kind of just change our our profit targets, change our stop losses. Because we get impatient, we want to see the result already. So a key for traders is to remain patient, to remain, you know, persistent in your game plan and not really changing it. Because as long as it's still moving in trend, it's still doing what it's supposed to do. Sure, it took a longer time here, but you have to let the trend play out. Remember, the trend is your friend. And if you can allow it to just sort of do its thing, if it's still in trend, let it play out. Chances are you're going to you're gonna reach one of these outcomes, right? It's a probability game. We'll either see a stop loss, profit target one, profit target two, et cetera. So we let that play out. We see the sell. So I said here I, I did sell about, I, said, I, I mentioned I did sell a little bit earlier. Um, I do leave runners. So I do sell portions, and that's why it notes only 6%. And my my the majority of my position was still at 381. So actually about here. So we did sell at about 381. And then I left the, my runners. I adjusted my stop to break even at the very least. Just kind of wanted to see how this was going. And into after hours, it's actually consolidating quite nicely. So... I'm going to be holding a small position overnight into the weekend. And the goal is to see if this thing can actually gap up. I've seen situations where stocks have gapped up from three to four to five, all the way, particular tickers going as far as even $20 a share. Now, I'm not trying to suggest that this is that's exactly what's going to happen here. But the conditions are there such that it could happen. And if it could happen, this is where we really want to utilize that runner position. Of course, adjusting our stop to break even just to protect those realized profits. So, you know, it's it's riskless in your in your favor. We've we have a three to one already realized. You know, there's not much left to risk here in this trade. I'm very curious to see where this goes. But of course, always having a plan and managing your risk through your stop losses is going to be very important so that you can realize these big winners if they are to facilitate without risking your realized profits. All right, so that's all for today. And as always, feel free to message me on Discord if you have any questions. Also, a nice uh, little shout out to everyone that did come to our Power Hour Stocks show. Just a friendly reminder, we will be hosting these shows between 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock Eastern time on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. You are always welcome to come join and you're always welcome to bring questions. We're more than happy to help. All right, guys, thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.